Greetings and salutations, outsiders. Classic Mods Master List Part 3 begins with a highly ambitious Fallout 4 race expansion and disease add-on that ultimately culminates in complete ghoulification. That's right, friends, we're talking about dynamic ghoulification. Most people who choose this mod will do so more as a playstyle or unlisted quest expansion rather than as an accidental disease effect. Unlike Skyrim's vampirism or any other contractable disease mechanic, ghoulification is fairly hard to obtain. It is also easily preventable and curable in the early stages and only affects the player. You would need to accidentally sustain a nearly fatal amount of radiation damage and not treat it for five straight days in game as your character graduates from severely irradiated to radioactive. Here's how it works. Once you've put on about 600 rads, you'll get a notification that says you feel terrible due to radiation sickness. If we have to be treated by doctors, this won't result in ghoulification. If you are foolish and only pump yourself full of rad away, another notification will appear. You start to notice skin is peeling from your body and you are bleeding profusely from these wounds. This is the beginning. Ghoulification sounds nasty. That's kind of the point. At this stage, the effects are relatively minor in appearance, with only a small visible change to the face and more apparent damage to the extremities. The second stage comes with a more severe notification and a greater number of lesions. More of your skin is peeling away, exposing the raw tissue underneath. You are in incredible pain and more blood is seeping out of your rotting flesh. It is now too late to cure ghoulification. Stage 3 is where your character begins to look truly Truly ghoulish, as you are a day away from total ghoulification. The final notification is this. You look at yourself in the mirror and no longer recognize the person on the reflection. You can now heal from radiation, are no longer affected by radiation poisoning, and are no longer attacked by ferals. But you are no longer respected among people the same way you once were. <sighs> Sheesh, way to keep the mood low, sister. This comes with horrific changes to the body and a significant charisma loss. Sadly, the radiation effects are broken. Radiation manage will not only continue to affect you, but will require a doctor's assistance to cure, making you significantly more vulnerable. Thus far, Outside is also struggling to get CBBE to work properly using a newly released patch. Further testing will be required, but we have two other mods to help in the meantime. One is a small plugin that updates the ghoulish perk, supplying the radiation resistance and healing expected from dynamic ghoulification. With this, you'll be able to explore the glowing sea and other irradiated cesspools to your heart's content without fear of harm or need of radiation gear. It also provides substantial healing benefits that can radically turn the tide of battle in some situations. If not for mid-recording power outage, you would be seeing an epic battle between Outside's character and a deranged lobotomite. <laughs> no joke, the lights went out for less than one second and took an hour of footage with them. The Under mod is available on Anxbots and is far less complicated than dynamic glutification. This is Ghoul Mask, which adds a small, initially unmarked quest to the game wherein you acquire flesh fragments to create a literal skin mask. Yeah, it's as creepy as it sounds. And the quest begins upon killing your first ghoul and requires you obtain 10 fragments, which you might imagine wouldn't be there with difficult. But no, it takes a fresh minute even if you're wholly devoted to the task because low-level ghouls have a lower chance of having fragments in their inventory. For that reason, it is best to slay higher-level ghouls, which is obviously a more difficult assignment. The reward, though, is appropriately legendary. As seen in Fallout 3, the ghoul mask protects you most of the time. It ceases to work in certain quest situations, though, like the Brotherhood of Steel fire support quest and apparently attackable lobotomites. We speculate that this may apply to others as well. Thus, you are not wholly immune to the ire of ghouls and should watch your back even after graphing mask. Sticking with the Fallout 3 theme for a moment longer, we have an outfit collection of immense quality that Mr. Outside has been trying to get working for ages. Even before the channel began, in fact. True. This is the Merc Outfit Pack. With this, you get a wide variety of more and less common Fallout 3 outfits, each of which have a small amount of defense and very low modifiability. 
These don't have any special attributes or quests though, so we won't waste your time further. You get the Merc Adventurer, Grunt, Troublemaker, Veteran, and Cruiser outfits, as well as the Sheriff's Duster, which can be changed into either a Regulator or Bounty Hunter Duster. PC users who want CBBE compatibility will need the body slide files provided in the description. If you don't generate them, they won't do anything. In the case of EMB users who are getting this weird oily texture glitch, turn off Complex Parallax and everything will go back to normal. Xbox players using CBBE will probably get a considerable number of visual glitches and there is nothing that we can or will do about that. <laughs> The outfits are level list integrated, meaning that you will find them on NPCs, in the inventories of vendors, and in dilapidated lockers. Enjoy. Our next mod is one of those we can't really confirm is good or not because it fits a very particular type of person, not all of whom we are. Personally, I found it to be the most annoying quest of all time because I kept getting turned around in the dungeon and the extremely powerful lobotomites kept killing me. It took me way too long to complete. She didn't have the quest markers enabled, so that's not really the designer's fault. Can you really blame me? I thought I'd be able to find my way around Nut House easily. Outside completed the question via allotted one hour playtime specified in the description and said that though the dungeon's layout was interesting, it was very cluttered, resulting in significant performance loss at times. With plunk FPS drops of 10 to 20 frames per second, which can't be seen because of the previously mentioned power outage that corrupted the footage. A much more significant issue that the team plans to fix in a later version is this hazy lighting effect that caused a red haze and increased brightness after breaking some of the gems within the dungeon's final sequence. The effect is very persistent, and Outsight wound up needing to revert to a save point before entering the dungeon. So yeah, Outside still doesn't suggest playing the quest yet, but is tracking its progress and will let you all know when he thinks it is playable, which shouldn't be too far off. We'll get more into the details of the quest at that time. That's disappointing. Fortunately, we have a very impressive weapon mod to raise your spirits. This is Toasty Fresh's N99 10mm pistol, the second best N99 of its kind. Though it may be outclassed by its FNB counterpart, this reimagining of the 10mm pistol from Fallout 3 and Mi Vegas is an amazing replacer for Fallout 4's 10mm Junker. This has a punchy recoil, heavy hitting audio, and beautiful textures and modeling. The animations, though solid, are not all that we would like them to be. As you can see here, the slide doesn't move while firing in third person, which isn't very noticeable on compact modern handguns, but the N99's size makes the issue more pronounced. Similarly, in first person, the weapon jerks viciously, making it difficult to enjoy the full auto firing method, let alone use efficiently. Those things said, we aren't trying to dissuade you from using the gun. Outside has been using the crap out of this thing. All week long, in fact. Without even noticing these issues. It was only after taking a fine to its cone to its functions that he found these issues at all. I didn't notice either. The first person semi automatic animations are clean and wavy, making the weapon feel almost true to life and extremely satisfying. Outside actually opted for this pistol over Wasteley and Melody's service rifle in battle because the rate of fire and stomping power are great up close. And the gun is really accurate and stable at long distance. He said that it is effective between 10 and 125 meters, which is absolutely insane. Thus, we'll be using this in the collection unless a superior version is released before the mob list is completed. Mixed up is another we aren't entirely sure will be in the collection. This is Desperado's overhaul. As you can see, this environmental overhaul changes the Fallen 4 wasteland into a desert similar to that of New Vegas. That said, the mod feels like more of a novelty item than a serious improvement to the gameplay. Because the local environment isn't well suited to the desert vibes, you lose out on much of what made New Vegas truly impressive, that being its large number of caves, cliffs, and dunes. In contrast, the Commonwealth feels largely devoid of life and luster, unless you add a considerable amount of other mods which will ultimately become a drain on your system. Initially, Outside was really impressed by the activity on display, with real AI vastly increasing the detection range of NPCs and allowing them to flee and pursue openly, which resulted in interesting scenarios like a one-foot-tall gecko chasing a bighorn across an open plain. 
cool though they may be, you can get those experiences from the vanilla wasteland if you have the same creature and AI mods active, meaning that Desperado's overhaul isn't necessary. Even the sand and rock texture adjustments aren't anything incredibly special, and we lost interest quickly. There is also the possibility of compatibility issues with other mods to consider. Come on, you're being way too negative, little sister. You do it, them. Oh. I'm reading the script word for word. Well, that's precisely the problem. Outside doesn't look on the bright side. You get corpses hanging from lampposts and newly added objects, and as you venture closer to the Blind Sea, more foliage begins to appear, thickening up as you enter. I don't know if that's supposed to be because of the radiation or the nearby waterways or what, but it is fairly dull. If maybe not so immersive. I like and want it. Sure, you do for now. But last week, you wanted the entire Commonwealth covered in snow because you were playing Fallout the Frontier. You know that Snow and I belong together. We're both light and fluffy. Yet, the forest prevails. Mm. Love you guys. See you in the next one. That's all we've got for today. If you enjoyed the mods, endorse them. And if you enjoyed the video, watch another one. There's three now. Later, yo.